using your RICOM Pathfinder Series Locator. The ideal way to identify or verify an underground cable is to expose it, but this isn't always possible. A RICOM cable and pipe locator is the next best method. This video is intended to assist you in becoming familiar with your Pathfinder Series Locator. For more detailed instructions, it is advised to read the user's manual as this video is not intended to replace the user's manual or your company's procedures and policies. When possible, review utility maps of an area. By looking for signs of buried utilities, much information can be obtained about the presence of underground utilities before a cable and pipe locator is used. The RICOM locating system uses two instruments, a transmitter and a receiver. The transmitter sends an electromagnetic field down a pipe or cable, and then a receiver detects the field, locating the utility in the area relative to it above ground. Over 70% of mislocates are due to improper use of the transmitter. Using the transmitter requires the greatest precision. If you can identify good connection sites and develop a good circuit, locating should be accurate and easy. The transmitter works by creating a circuit which is a complete circle of electric current. The electrical current must be able to flow from the transmitter down the utility to an earth ground and then return to the transmitter through the soil. The better the circuit, the more signal will be transmitted on the line. The transmitter can transmit signal to a utility and create a circuit using three different methods direct connection, coupler induction, or transmitter induction. Out of the three methods, transmitting a signal by direct connection is the best method. Direct connection offers the greatest signal strength. It allows you to use either low or high frequencies, and it allows you to manipulate the grounding of the transmitter. Direct connection should be used over coupler induction and transmitter induction whenever possible. To create a direct connection, clip the red positive cord to a metallic conductor of the utility. This may include copper shielding, ground wire, tracer wire, pipe wall, or a fire hydrant. Never connect directly to a live electric line. Connection points vary depending on the type of utility you're trying to locate. Here's a quick reference. For more details, consult your owner's manual. Ground the unit by connecting the black negative clip to the grounding rod or a nearby metal object such as a parking meter or a street sign. It's important to ground away from the transmitter at a 90 degree angle from the line. Grounding away from the utility allows for a proper return path. Grounding near or over the utility may cause the outgoing signal and the returning signal to interfere. It is also important to avoid grounding over nearby utilities. This may cause the signal to return on non-target utilities causing ghosting or interference. Ground away from other utilities. Ghosting and other interferences will be discussed in more detail later in this video. Dry, rocky, or sandy soil conditions create a poor return path for the signal. To improve the grounding conditions, water may be poured over the ground rod or a larger, deeper ground may be used. Both of these methods will increase the ground and help create a more reliable circuit. The greater the ground, the greater the signal strength. Always try using the low frequency first. If the signal strength is weak, Check your connection of the red lead. You may need to expose more cable surface area to clip to or scrape off more paint. Then try to improve the ground and lastly increase the frequency. Coupler induction is used when you can't use direct connection. This includes on an energized power line or a telephone line that can't be interrupted. To coupler induce, Simply clamp the coupler around an accessible area of cable and select a high frequency on the transmitter. A coupler will only induce at high frequency. In order to create a circuit, both the near and far ends of the cable must be grounded. 
Without the utility grounded at both the near and far end, coupling will not work. Even though the transmitter is not grounded, you still create a circuit. The energy flows down the cable, going to ground and returning through the earth to the near end ground where it returns to the cable forming a loop. Transmitter induction can also be used when direct connection can't. However, a transmitter induced signal will have less signal strength and may be present on other lines in near proximity to the transmitter. To transmitter induce, simply place the transmitter on the ground over the pipe or cable with the arrows on the transmitter parallel to the buried line. The transmitter emits a field which couples to the underground cable or pipe. The energy travels down the cable and pipe to the far end, returns through the ground and onto the utility at the near end ground. Transmitter induction only works at high frequency. As a result, all cables and pipes around the transmitter will carry the signal, making it hard to identify the target cable or pipe. Transmitter induction will induce both below and above the transmitter. Be cautious of interference from buried cables and overhead lines. You can also use transmitter induction to do a sweep. One person holds the transmitter and another holds the receiver. By moving together across an area, rotating each pass 45 degrees, you can sweep an area to locate cables and pipes. We've talked about the use of different frequencies, but we need to go into a bit more detail so you know the pros and cons of the frequencies. The high frequency, 82 kilohertz, is great at getting over different kinds of hurdles on the line. These can include anything from a sheath fault to rubber gaskets on water pipes to poorly conductive cast iron pipes. However, a high frequency can jump to a good conductor when you're actually trying to locate a poor one, so be cautious. The 82 kilohertz high frequency is also used for induction or coupling. The higher energy allows the signal to jump on a line. High frequency is not good for congested areas where many lines run next to each other because the signal can jump or bleed over onto nearby lines. High frequency does not work well over long distances. The high frequency's ability to jump onto a line also is a hindrance. A high frequency will self-induce or bleed over onto nearby lines while a low frequency will stay true to the cable or pipe. The low frequency 815 Hertz works well in a number of instances. These include on lines that conduct easily, in example, cable TV, telephone, and power lines. And since it stays true to the line, the low frequency is ideal for congested areas. Low frequency also works well over long distances. However, the 815 Hertz low frequency does not overcome hurdles well, nor do low frequencies work well on poor conductors or for inducing. In review, it is best whenever possible to direct connect and use low frequency 815 Hertz. By adjusting the ground, you can control the amount of signal strength on a conductor. High frequency should only be used when necessary. Coupler induction and transmitter induction only work with high frequency 82 kilohertz and do not allow for much manipulation that may improve the locate. Of course, using the transmitter properly is only half the task. You also need to learn how to use the receiver to locate correctly.